you. Lord God, I just thank you for um, this time, Lord. I thank you, God, for um, Pastor Benjamin and his church, Lord, and his family, and all the leaders and the members here. I thank you, God, for bringing me here. And um, Lord God, let your will be done um, this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God for the opportunity of just being here today. So today we're going to um, go into the scriptures. Um, Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 14, and then 25 and 26. And I'm going read it, to read it into your hearing. Verse 1 says, in chapter 4, says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again this time, and his brother, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Verse 4, Abel also brought of the first flock, firstborn of his flock, and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Verse 6, So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? Verse 7, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at your door, it, and it desires it's for you. But you shall rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Um, we're in verse 9 now. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know, am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother blood cries out from, to me from the, from the ground. So, so now, verse 11, so now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened up his mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond you shall be on the earth. Uh, verse 13. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear it. Surely you have given me out of this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a, a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it shall happen that anyone that finds me will kill me. And Adam, verse 25 now. And Adam knew his wife again. And she bore um, a son and called and named him Seth. For God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also was a son born. He, and he named him Enosh. And he named him Enosh. Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, for our title this morning, I'd like to lift up Worship for his wonders. Yes, Lord. Worship for his wonders. Uh, Father God, Lord, in Jesus' name, may you now, Lord, use me as your vessel, Lord, to bring forth your word, and that you will be honored and glorified, Lord, and that we will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Worship for his wonders. It's amazing that I've been saved now for 24 years, and I've always been fascinated by the wonders of God. I, the way I got saved, I was in one of the islands, I was running a business with a friend of mine, and I left New York for about a year, and um, I was working in the prison, I was a prison guard, and I was working, and then God had me to go overseas to one of the islands. And when I got there to run a business that became very lucrative, um, it was a clothing store business, and I thought this is my opportunity now with my friend that we are going to be entrepreneurs. And as we were going about business, there was something peculiar that began to happen to me, Pastor. I began to have nightmares with demons in them. 
I've had nightmares before, but this was kind of different. These demons were in my dream tormenting me, but when I would wake up, they, I don't know how this happens, but it's a spiritual world. They came out of my nightmare and into my bedroom. And so as, as those demonic figures were shadowy figures in my dreams, the same ones jumped out, and it could have been different ones, but they were now in the reality of my bedroom, tormenting me day and night. Couldn't sleep at night. For about 14 hours a night, I was being tormented. Every night, scared to go home. And I said, should I run back to New York? And I said, well, maybe they'll follow me. So that might not be good. And so there I was being tormented every single night, not knowing what to do. I'm from, I didn't grow up in church. I mean, went to Sunday school when we were young and stuff like that. <clears throat> but I really didn't know what it, what it meant and what was going on. So I began to ask people that worked around me, some of the employees, what is this? And they were saying, well, my old people say that it's evil spirits. I said, well, how do you get rid of them? Some say you have to get baptized. Some say some other ways. And I said, okay, I'm going to try everything out there first. I tried to call upon Muhammad to Islam. That didn't work. I tried to call upon Selassie or um, what the Rastafarians worship in Jamaica. That didn't work. I even tried Egyptian gods. I tried Egyptology. That didn't work. I was, trying, I was trying to drink my way out of it. I was trying to smoke my way every single night. But I could not get rid of those demons. Couldn't sleep. Tormented. Tired at work. Scared to go home. When I would go home, I would see shadows just moving around the house like this. Hundreds of them. And, but I went in the house and I said, here goes another night. I'm going to fight. They would try to take my clothes off. They would scratch me, all kind of stuff going on. And I, was, and I thought that I was going crazy. And I said, all of my years, I've never been crazy. This is, not, this is not me. Something else is going on. I've only seen these things in haunted movies. And so after I tried all of those other religions and everything else, I, began, I remember Psalms 23. Even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So the Christian Bible was next in line now for me to try it out. If that didn't work, I'm going to try something else. And so I got the Bible, I read Revelation, got scared, and then began to read Genesis. When I began to read Genesis, and I read the stories, these are one of the stories that I came across, Cain and Abel. And I kept reading the whole Bible. I, 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 as I was reading the, the Word of God, I was reading the stories, and I was telling pastor yesterday that when I got through Exodus and I saw the law, I started to obey the law, and I said I wanted to do it the right way, and I called upon God to help me that I don't die, but if I can get enough time to read the Bible, then he can kill me or whatever happens to me, but at least let me know the truth, and then let me decide what I'm going to do. Skipped over Leviticus because there was too much blood going on, and I had no idea what was going on, all those sacrifices, and then... I, started, I just started to believe. And I saw that God was a, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I saw all of his names. El Shaddai, El Elyon, you know, Yahweh, and all these things. And I went all the way into the New Testament. As I was reading, and I called upon his name, I didn't call upon Jesus yet. I was just calling upon the Father. I had awareness who they were now. I can identify them, but I still couldn't get rid of them. And once I got into the New Testament where I saw these demons were running from Jesus, I said, you know what? Let me pray to him directly. When I prayed to him directly, I, that night in my bedroom, the light went out. There was a light coming through the window. The light went out. And I saw the demons coming in. And they just converged onto the room where it was complete pitch black darkness. And I saw the shadows coming in upon me. And I jumped off my bed. And I said, let me try it. Jesus, help me. Whoa. And when I said, Jesus, help me, those demons, they backed up. When I said, Jesus, help me, I saw that they got scared. And I said to myself, oh, it works. That's how I know that Jesus is God. No one can tell me that Jesus is not God. Because of my experience, I know for myself 
No other Bible teaching and no theology can tell me that he's not the Lord and Savior. So I get back on the bed and I said, huh, I'm from Jamaica. So I said, make them try to come again. I lay back, on, back down on the bed and they came back in. And I just screamed out, Jesus! And they ran. Yes, and I said, that's the power right there. Yes, Lord. Then I begin to understand that God has a whole lot of names. But there's one name that he designated for this earth for deliverance and for salvation. We can, we can say Yahweh, we can say El Shaddai, you know, we can say um, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, my banner, we can say all these things. One name. And, but he said that there's only one of all of my names, there's one name uh, for deliverance on this earth, and his name is Jesus. Yes. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes. Jesus, the Messiah. Yes. Right? One name. One name. Yes, Lord. And ever since then, I've been calling that one name. Ever since then, God has been delivering me. God has me walking through things that I had no business doing, but I've had power over demons and devils. I've had power over everything. When I went back to New York, my family thought I was crazy. It was very uncomfortable because I, was, I had a beard down to here. I had hair, and I thought I was Moses and Elijah. I was preaching in parking lots on my own. I was preaching on the streets, and I ended up being homeless on the streets of New York City. And for four months, I had nothing. I lost everything. I was sleeping on sidewalks. Lost everything. Lost hope. Wanted to commit suicide. And I said, if I die, maybe I get a chance to see Jesus. Come on. And so I said, I know this is not the right way to do it, but I, I tried to commit suicide because I wanted to die. And I begged for enough money to kill myself. And as I was walking down the street with the money that I had to go kill myself, a little girl came up to me and she said, Mr., and God knows I can't say no to kids. Yeah, I can't say no to you, man. And as the little girl came up, I said, what is it? And as I was, as Pastor, I tell you, as I was trying to go around the sidewalk, she matched my steps. When I was trying to go this way, and I said, why is she playing with me? I'm trying to kill myself. My and she said, I need money to eat some food and to go home. And the exact change that I had in my pocket is what she asked for. Yes, Lord. When I took that money out of my pocket and gave to her, I heard the Lord said, I got a promise Come on. on your life. Come on. You have yet to see the wonders that I have in store for you. And then I began to worship God and God said, if you keep worshiping me, you are gonna see wonders. For the Bible said that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what he has in store for us. And as God gave me this message this morning, I began to look at Cain, Abel, Seth, and Enos. Yes, Lord. And God was saying that these four men represent something in the Bible. Yes, and God began to talk about Cain. And Cain became a wanderer. Right? So our first one is wanderer. There are some people in this world that are just wanderers. They might be in the church, but they're up to no good. They're wandering like the enemy to and fro to see who they can assassinate and destroy. There are some people in the church, they're undercover witches, they're undercover warlocks. There are people that are agents of the enemy, used also in the church and the world to assassinate your dreams, to assassinate what God has put in your life. And, 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 and there was a time where um, Cain and Abel brought sacrifices to God. And, and, um, and God approved Abel's sacrifice because it's from the heart. And Cain was not respected. Now let's be honest with you. One was a farmer and one was a shepherd. How many people know that farmers are very important for this world? Yes, Lord. Everybody should be a farmer regardless if you have a big lot or you have a little place that you can grow some whatever. Right. So it wasn't the fact that he was a farmer, it was how he brought his sacrifice. Yes, it's what he brought to God that God said, ah, not the first fruits. We assume because that's what Abel did. Yes, Lord. Amen? And so Cain became upset. But then here God, God went to him directly and said, hey, if you do good, you will be approved. 
But there is sin that lies at your door that you can have power over it. Cain decided not to listen to God. But then he went and he had a talk with his brother Abel. And he killed his brother Abel. Right? Right. And then God came back to Cain and said, what have you done? Where is your brother? Thank you, sir. He said, where is your brother? What have you done? And the first thing that Cain says, am I my brother's keeper? I have no idea. It's kind of like the same thing he did when Adam was asked, what, what did you do? Yes, Lord. And he kind of repeats the same thing Adam said, it's the woman that you gave me. A woman. It, is, it is a point where you have to be responsible for your actions. Come on, Lord. And even when you get caught up in the wrong thing, just go to God and repent and be responsible for your action. Yes, because God can always work things out, yes, but he needs you to work it out in your heart first. Yes, Lord. And Abel said, I, I mean, Cain said, I don't know what you're talking about. And then the, the blood of Abel was crying out yes, Lord. from the ground. Yes, Lord. It was crying out. And so the first point is wonder, where the second point is a witness that the blood of Abel was a witness to the act, to the violent act that happened. Yes, Lord. And God said that the witness of the blood is speaking to me. Yes, Lord. As a matter of fact, the, the Lord said the voice of his blood is speaking to me. Ah. And God is saying that, uh, that, that, that there, there are people that have been killed unjustly even in this world. Ah. There are things that are happening where people are crying out. There are sometimes people's blood have been spilled. People have innocent blood have been spilled. There are things going on that unjustly that affects a community, that affects a family, that affects an individual. And God is saying, I can hear your cries and I can see your tears. And I'm going to do something about it. And where the blood of Abel was only able to speak from the ground, from the foundation of the earth, we have another blood, and that's the blood of Jesus. That blood of Jesus can speak from the ground, from the sky, from your heart. No matter where you are, it is much greater than the blood of Abel. And, and God is saying that even though his blood is speaking from the ground, and God responded to the blood of Abel, how much more shall he respond uh, to the blood of his son? Uh, how much more shall he respond uh, to the blood of Jesus? Uh, how much more shall he respond uh, to the one that was crucified uh, on Calvary and said, Father, forgive them. The one that, that opened up his hands and said, uh, it is finished. Uh, and when he said that it was finished, uh, he meant that everything was done. Uh, he has conquered death uh, and we are able to walk in the glory and the power of his resurrection. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. And so as Cain was a wanderer, Abel's blood represent worshiping. That we were, that we know as a witness, that we were a, a witness to what's going on. God has also called us to be a witness unto this world should not be monopolized by the kingdom hall by Jehovah's Witnesses but God is saying that we are the witnesses because we have the truth of the Savior but we know that Jesus Christ is God we know that he's Lord and the last time I checked he's still the King of Kings he's still the Lord of Lords the last time I checked he is the Lord of Glory the last time I checked he delivered me from demons and he set me in a place uh, that's higher than I was before uh, and we just thank God uh, for the witness we thank God for the blood of Jesus uh, you are a witness right now with your life unto God uh, you are a witness with your life unto God uh, you are a living witness and then says as God began to tell me more about um, the witness he also mentioned he also mentioned Seth. Mm. Seth was the other son that replaced Abel. Mm. And, and he 
God blessed him to the point where his name literally means appointed yes, Lord. and placed. Yes, Lord. That he was appointed and placed for a reason. And as God, as, as Abel was gone, God replaced him. You see, you can try to stop the plans of God, but if God got to be, got to get somebody else born out of, out of a woman's womb to put that anointing back on that, you can't stop God. You got Abel, but now you got Seth. God said, I'm going to give you the upgrade, and his name is going to be Seth. And out of Seth came someone named Enos. And the Bible said that then men began to call on the name of the Lord. God had two witnesses between Abel and Seth. And out of Seth came Enos. And the Bible said that then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. You see, the thing about Seth is that we can be able, we can be assassinated, we can be killed, our blood can be spilled and be like a mortar for Jesus. That's still good because you're serving God. Or you can be like a Seth where God has put you in a position uh, like pastor or some of you positionally so a guy from New York can come here and worship God because he's in the right place uh, at the right time. Uh, there is something about being in the right place and the right time for God uh, because I was in the right place at the right time uh, and I gave my life to Jesus and he turned my whole life around. Uh, a street preacher from Flatbush, Brooklyn is walking right now in Accra, Ghana. A street preacher from Flatbush, Brooklyn and from Jamaica, from Kingston, Jamaica can walk on this earth and say, I know who God is. I'm a witness of his glory. And so some of us are able, some of us are set. And then some of us are Enosh. Or we ought to be Enosh. And the last point is a uh, worshiper. Cain was a wonder. Where Abel and Seth, they were witnesses. But Enosh now was a worshiper. When men begin to call upon the name of the Lord, uh, when women and child become begin to call upon the name of the Lord, uh, oh yeah, we and with the blood of Jesus, not only has made us a witness, but He's also made us a worshiper. And that's why we got to continue to worship uh, because we got to see the wonders of God. Uh, that when people see us worship, uh, that they too will call upon uh, the name of the Lord. Uh, oh, if God is saying, oh, if someone will just worship me, they will see my wonders. Uh, God is saying that, oh, if someone will just give me their heart, uh, they will see my glory. Oh, if someone will just worship me, they will see the magnificence of God. Uh, oh, if someone will just worship me. Oh, come on and say hallelujah, somebody. Come on, stand to your feet, somebody. Oh, we got to worship God uh, because I don't know about you, uh, but I want to see his wonders. Uh. I don't know about you, uh, but I want to see his glory. I don't know about you, uh, but I want to see the wonders uh, of God. Uh. I want to be an Enosh. Uh. I want to be an Abel. Uh. I want to be a Seth. Uh. But I want to be like Jesus. With his blood that's covering me, uh, that I will be a witness and a worshiper. I will be a witness uh, and a worshiper. Oh, come on and give God some glory. Come on and say hallelujah. I want to be a witness uh, and a worshiper. Come on and lift your hands to glory right now. Hallelujah, Lord God. We declare to you right now, God, uh, that we will worship you, God. Uh, for your wonders, for your wonders, God. Whatever it is, Lord, I just declare over this church right now, God, that your wonders will never cease. It will never stop there, Lord God. Prosperity and finances, dear Father God, help them, Lord. In their spirit, in their homes, Lord, help them, Lord God. In their heart, God, let your wonders move upon the heart of this church there, Lord God. Upon this pastor, Lord God, may you continue to use him, Lord God, to show forth your wonders, Lord. May you continue to use this brother as well, Lord, to show forth your wonders there, Lord God. For the Bible declares that I have not seen uh, have not heard uh, what God has in store 
for you. Yes, Come on, if someone just give him some praises. Yes, we thank you, God, yes, for your wonders yes, that will never cease. Yes, and we bless you, Lord, yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, Let's just say a word of prayer. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for your wonders upon my life. That your wonders will never cease, God. As I continue to be a witness and a worshiper, Lord, the blood of Jesus will let me see your wonders, Lord, and walk in it. And we declare that right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on and give a shout. Let me hear you. Come on and give a shout. Let me hear you. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. you so 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 much thank you the man of god pastor desmond from calvary cross church we are grateful man of god we are grateful man of god you've done well Amen. and we love the word we know now that we are a wonder because we must be a witness Amen. and be worshipers and we are thrilled and blessed to have you in the christ bank chapel accra ghana and forever calvary crosses church will forever be part of the christ bank chapel we love you we love you the lord brought you in time in a in a, in a season such as this to have you deliver a prophetic word to us our team for the year 2023 is a year of doing exploit yes and the truth is that it is important that we understand that you can never do exploit until you become a witness and a worshiper. Amen. And the word of God prophetically came in a season such as this to help us to begin to walk in witness and walk in worship so that exploit comes automatically. And by the revelation you delivered us from, for us today, we are persuaded today that we will walk in exploit because we are today worshipers and we are witnesses. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. The Christ Bank Chapel Accra loves you Amen. and will forever want to have you. Anytime you are in Ghana, yes. join us. Okay. The Christ Bank loves Pastor Desmond and he is a gift to Africa and a gift to Ghana and a gift to the nations of the world. Amen. May the Lord bless you through this medium and open the heavens for you. Be a witness and be a worshiper. May the Lord bless you. Man of God, God bless you. God bless we love you. you. A clap of him for the man of God in the name of Jesus.